Ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be one of the most controversial videos that I've ever made, but it's not for the controversy, it's because I'm trying to add some value here and have a real discussion that I haven't really heard anyone else talk about. So, you probably feel like you can't afford the car you want, the house you want, at your age, because your peers at a similar age are able to do a lot more than you. You're like, what the hell, I'm working hard, thought I'm doing well, what gives? Now, I recently bought a Lotus Amira, which to me feels like a big deal, but to a lot of people who are 33 years old, not that big of a deal, it's a $100,000 car. I know a lot of people younger than me that were driving Cayman GT4s and other fancy ass cars. So I don't feel like I'm any hotshot. I might even be a little bit late to the game in certain ways. But at the same time, I'm also very grateful because I know a lot of people dream of having cars like this. So like, you know, like I'm humble enough to say that I'm not a hotshot, but I'm also grateful enough to say that, yeah, like I'm fortunate. So the reason why you feel like you aren't where you want to be is because you're being lied to and not in the way that you think. So you're probably thinking about the people that have poor financial discipline. You see them flexing on social media and such. They're buying too much house, too much car, not living responsibly, living essentially paycheck to paycheck, things like that. We know that's bad. We don't need to spend very much time on that in this video because you already, already know that and I'm not really teaching you anything by going into that. The second category of people who seem to be doing a lot better than you, they actually are doing better than you. But these people are just really impressive. They may have started with less than you have and achieved more in a shorter time frame. I love these people because they push me to go harder. They push me to see what I'm capable of, what is possible. You see people out there that accomplish these amazing things and you say, damn, you know, maybe I can do a little bit more. If this person is doing X, Y, and Z, maybe I can do half that. And then there's the third category of people that is really underappreciated and kind of hidden, which is those who are privileged. Now, when I say that, you're probably thinking, Richie Rich, or the kid that's you know driving a Porsche Cayman GT4, GT3, 20 years old. Okay, that's very obvious. But I'm talking about the other people because growing up, I thought that it was just the Richie Riches and whoever in the world that had these massive advantages. And that everyone else, like we're all kind of the same. We're all like, you know, uh, you know, middle class and we don't really have all that much help, yada, yada, yada. But a few things happened that really changed the way that I see things. The first was when I was graduating med school, I, uh, I found out that 30% of the graduating class had no student debt at all, completely paid for. And then and the reason being that you attend this uh, like, uh, this loan or like loan repayment seminar at the end and you have to like kind of, it's like education. But 30% of the class doesn't have to go because they have no debt at all. And then you know like the one girl whose dad, pharmaceutical blah blah blah, sold it, hundreds of millions of dollars, okay cool. But then even the people that you thought were just like you, oh I thought they were just middle class but, and they drive a Honda, a Toyota, whatever, but their parents actually covered all their college, all their med school. Oh, that's awesome, that's fantastic. Now there's nothing actually wrong with this at all. The issue that I have is when people that have the head start act like they don't. Okay, so going back to, to med school as an example, some people, they, uh, they may have worked a little bit before, saved up some money, but for most of those 30, you know, those 30%, those 35, 40 people, it was because they just had parental help, and that's awesome, that's good for them. Me, looking at those, uh, I remember looking at, uh, what was it, uh, David Gerard, this football player. Who, when I first got diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, I looked at people like him to say, hey, I can work hard, I can accomplish things, I'm not doomed to this life of whatever, based on this condition. I was 18 at the time. And 
I worked my fucking tail off. When people say they work hard, I, I mean, there, there's there's levels to it. I look back and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I don't even know how I worked that hard for all of college and all of med school, you know, until plastic surgery residency when I you know, eventually resigned. I was working my fucking ass off. But it paid off because I got the one and only full tuition merit-based scholarship at UC San Diego. They have one per year, and as a result of it, I had to take out only thirty thousand dollars in loans over four years, which is very small for a you know, comparatively speaking, for med school. But again, that wasn't zero. There were a lot of people that had zero. So you get older, and then you're like, okay, you know, whatever. Like that's just medicine. Maybe medicine attracts a lot of certain type of people. But then, now that I'm in my early 30s, a lot of my friends, they have homes. And what I find out is that almost every single one of them had some major help along the way. There are a couple exceptions. One of them lives in LA, but he has like four housemates. One of them bought his home at 39, but part of his business is coaching. But I also think when you're 39 later on in life, it's not that unusual. But, you know, uh, as part of his business, people stay with him and pay money. Okay. But just about everyone else I know, they got help with the down payment or the whole home was bought for them. Or it's just, you're like, damn, okay. Now it's starting to make sense that a lot of the times you're comparing yourself to someone who is so far ahead of you when they start out. So it's not a fair comparison. And that's why they say, like, comparison is the thief of joy. Only if you make judgments from it. I actually find a lot of fuel and energy from comparing myself to people who are doing better than me and being inspired by that. But you have to be realistic. And if you're being hard on yourself saying, hey, I'm working so hard, I'm like saving and investing and blah, 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 but I still don't feel like I can get the house. I still don't feel like I can get the car I want. Keep in mind, the people you're comparing yourselves to, they're probably starting out ahead. And there's nothing wrong with that. My kids, they're definitely gonna start out ahead. I'm gonna give them whatever opportunities I can that I did not. No doubt about it. But the difference is I'm gonna make sure those kids practice some humility and know that they started out ahead. Because you'll see these other people who, you know, I saw this one guy who came from overseas to the US, very successful at business. And I saw this article, you know, you can like pay uh, whatever magazines to like write these articles about you. Oh, you know, I came from this country, I came here and I'm like, now I'm so successful, I started this thing, I'm this amazing businessman. It's like, dude, you inherited your father's profitable business at 20 years old that had three brick and mortar locations. Come on, let's be real here, because what you're doing is making your level of success seem, it, it's false. And while it's good to inspire people, it's also, it's also like good to be realistic so people know what is it, what is not realistic. There's this girl I know who uh, traveled the world on her own dime for two years in her early 20s. I was like, God damn, that's super impressive. Later find out, trust fund dad, and I asked her, like, oh wait, so like, how'd you save? She was living in SF, making less than 100K per year, which, you know, in SF is so expensive. She's not saving much, but I find out <laughs> her test paying her rent, her car, her phone bills, so any money she makes, she just socks away. Be, like, you can't go around telling women, yeah, you can go do this in your early 20s, not a big deal. You get, here's how I did it. Like, dude, keep it real, man. You had amazing privilege and like it's badass that you did it from a safety perspective. I think to be a solo woman traveling the world is, is impressive from like, look, I, I learned self, you know, uh, safety and I learned self-defense and yeah, yeah, that's cool. But the financial side, that's just false advertising, man. That's just not fair. That's not cool. Another story, there was uh, this guy that used to be a really close friend. He found himself in a bad position, made a, Silly, silly move, and he needed fifty thousand dollars from me. Called me late at night one night, saying, "Hey, man, like I need it by tomorrow. Please, please, please. Like you're my brother." I remember him saying that, like you're like a brother to me. I was like, "Bro, I can do ten. I can't do fifty. Like I need to move investments around. I gotta liquidate some. Like I can't do fifty. I can do ten. He's like, "Please, man." He begs me. I'm like, "Fuck." I give him the fifty k. He promises me in that moment, "I'm gonna give you that money within sixty days or less." I promise you have my word. And we did self development courses together, man. Like we understood the importance of integrity and keeping your word. And I was like, "Okay, cool. This guy's a good friend. I've known him for a few years. One of my closest friends." Sixty days comes and goes. Uh, hey, man. Like, uh, just checking in. You know, how's that? How's the stuff going? And oh yeah, hey man, I just need a little bit more time. Seventy days pass. Same thing. 80 days, hey dude, I'm getting a little bit concerned. Is everything cool? Cause like, you said 60 days and now we're 20 days past. And uh, I know you're good for it, but I'm getting a bit concerned. 
90 something days pass. I get my money back with like $100 in interest. Eh, you know, I, if I was him, I would have been a little bit more generous given the circumstances because I lost much more than that from my investments. But hey, whatever. Okay, cool. Helped a friend out. And then upon giving to me, he says, hey man, you know, like other people that I took money from, they were a lot more cool than you. Oh, sorry, what do you mean? Like, you were kind of pressuring me at the end. Uh, okay, like I was, yeah, I mean, you told me 60 days and it took over 90. Yeah, but like, you know, my family, they were just like, they were cool with it. They said, hey, don't worry, take as long as you need. My other friend, same thing. I was like, okay, first of all, your friend you've known since you were a kid, so you guys have a, uh, whatever there. Plus, he's like employee 10 at Uber. This guy's worth $20 million. And for me, you know, I literally paid off my student loans two years ago. Negative net worth to zero two years ago. And now you're asking for 50K. That's a huge chunk of my net worth. And, um, and I told him like, hey man, you know, for people like me that don't come from as much privilege, like you gotta keep in mind that 50K alone is a big fucking deal, dude. By the way, I'm never gonna do that again. That was a stupid move. Never gonna loan people money ever again. And uh, he says, yeah, but Kevin, you went to nice school. It's like, don't act like you're not privileged. I was like, oh my fucking God, this guy, <sighs> these are the kinds of situations that really rubbed me the wrong way. Because this guy took a loan from his parents of fifty thousand dollars when he was in uh, when he was like twenty years old. His first business failed in college. Then he graduates, or maybe soon around graduation, like twenty two or whatever. Fifty thousand dollar loan from his parents. How many people can do that? How many people? That is like that's a completely different world versus if you have nothing, right? Completely different world. Entrepreneurship becomes way easier when you can try things and fail and just take fifty k loans. Completely different. He had a private tutor. Didn't go to the greatest public schools, but had a private tutor all through grade school. And I'm like, hey man, look, I, I do come from some privilege. I get it. I have a loving mo mother. I'm born in the US and I went to good public schools. And in my neighborhood, going to college was great. But like, that's just not the same thing, man. I'm not saying I have it the hardest. I definitely don't have it nearly as easy as you. And you know, that kind of disconnect is really off-putting and it just, when people go online and flex, like they're these self-made badasses, it makes you feel like you need to be doing that same thing. When people are that out of touch, I think that it's it's overall just really detrimental to everyone. And and again, this is all different layers, right? I, I don't think that I have the hardest life in the world by any means. I'm so privileged because I'm born in America, because I'm able-bodied, and because I have a loving mother. But there's so many people with so much more that act that they have so much less, this victim mindset. If you have a stable family when you're young, that's actually a huge advantage. They actually find that that is a greater indicator of your uh, future success than even uh, family income. And unfortunately, I didn't have the stability that I wish I did growing up. I got a chronic illness, no fault of my own, at 18. Like, a lot of these things come up, but you can't be a victim. You say, okay, cool, those are my cards, but it's so much more badass when you have the story where you create the success based on your own accord. I have, I have two friends in med school right now who are getting, uh, whose parents are buying them houses. And I'm like, dude, fuck yeah. And I love that they're like, they're like so grateful for it. They're like, dude, I'm so fortunate, I'm so lucky. And like some of my friends hate on me for that. Why should they hate? Like, I'm gonna give my kids whatever opportunities they can too. When you, when you are realistic about your opportunities and your privilege, you don't act and you don't lie and you don't deceive people, why should you be ashamed? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Kudos to those guys, stoked for them. And then you can find your own silver lining and your own meaning. I'm grateful to be truly self-made because my house, my cars, my successes, it gives me that level of self-efficacy and confidence that would be harder otherwise. And I'm grateful for getting sick when I was 18. It fucking sucked. It was like the toughest few years of my life. But it gave me so much drive and it showed me my limits. And yeah, it was really tough, but it showed me that when, uh, when times get tough ahead, I can handle it because I did that before. So you can choose to tell yourself the story you want, but in the process, don't believe the bullshit you see out there. The people that had less than you and get, did more, use them as inspiration. And those people that make financially poor decisions, obviously don't follow in their footsteps, but those other people in that third category who come from really significant privilege, but you know, act like they're totally self-made, don't fall for that. And, and again, it's like, they don't need to be advertising, oh, hey, I got a house, but hey, by the way, my parent, like, it's not really our business. What I think is wrong is 
when they're just so out of touch. Like that friend who I loaned 50K to. Like that, that girl who traveled the world and is like, yeah, anyone can do it. Like, look, I can do it. If you can't, it's just because you're not trying hard enough. That's the stuff that I have an issue with. The guy who's flexing about how he's so self-made is like, dude, you inherited your, fa your father's business. Anyway, I hope what I'm saying is not gonna be misunderstood as it often is on the internet, so we'll see what happens. I'm not hating on those who are privileged. I'm hating on the dishonesty. And I think we can be better. And I don't want you all who are in similar positions to me where you work really hard and you feel like, damn, like, what am I doing wrong here? Maybe you're not doing anything wrong. Maybe you have to recalibrate your expectations and see that slow success, steady over time, starting from zero and building from there, or starting from negative if you have student loans. There's a certain joy and reward and pleasure that comes from that and savor it because at the end of the day, life's short and it's what you make of it. Much love my friends. See you all the next one.